think podcasters, even though like we talk on a microphone, we're not the most like, extroverted people out there. Like, I notice a lot of people are very like, they want to stay within their circle of friends. They don't want to reach out. They don't want to cold call people. How do I book a guest for my podcast? My first piece of advice in general, don't get in your own way. It's going to feel really scary, but it's going to be fun. Before you start thinking about how to approach a guest, make sure that you're thinking about the the guests that you want to have on and why. It's really important for you to vet your guests really well before having them on. I typically like to go for people who have some podcast experience or some digital media experience, some YouTube experience. If they have equipment that can like hold up to the test, on some of my shows, I even will specify like, it would be great if you could have this kind of mic or something nicer. If you can be in this kind of room with this kind of treatment, if you can put up a blanket. So make sure that you're looking for guests who can give you audio that sounds good. Uh, but also make sure that there's somebody who you feel like you're gonna vibe with. You feel like you're gonna have fun with. Where to start with the search process is of course, if you're making a podcast, you better be listening to podcasts. The amount of times people will literally brag to me. Oh, I don't listen to podcasts. I just make them. And I'm like, <laughs> what? that's unhinged, um, which I know is a lot coming from me. And I just made that laugh. But uh, this would not fly in any other industry. You do not hear filmmakers saying, I don't watch movies. Everybody would rip them to shreds. So you should have a list of podcasts you love. Make sure that you are in spaces where podcasters are. Uh, you should be doing things like joining Discord servers of podcasters. Look around on social media, see who's following who, and see, again, if there are those vibe matches and if you can find people who feel like a good fit. Now let's talk about reaching out. Always try to engage before you pitch. You want to have some level of familiarity there. Don't think of your engagement as, like, investing make your engagement actually authentic. You should be having people on your show whose work you enjoy. And if you make a podcast, you probably know that like hearing that somebody enjoys your show is way more rare than anybody would expect. This is a great way to sort of engender some trust and some familiarity before you just cold pitch. If they have a newsletter, leave a comment, send a reply. It's nice and it's also helpful. And then once you pitch, you can just send a quick email and say, hi, this is my name. I make this podcast. I'd love to have you on to talk about this. Your first email to them can be really short and sweet. You can make it a template if you want, but make sure that you customize it and show that you know the person you're pitching to, that you know what they make, you know what they're about and that you're making something that they would be interested in coming on. And you have to believe that you are. Don't get in your own way. I think podcasters sometimes want the easy route. So they like, they make that template, right? And then they replace the thing. But it, having something that's genuine and having something that's like a person who knows who you are, has listened to your show, can even say like, hey, I loved your topic on this thing. You went really deep into this. That for me, speaks so much because I think, as you said, a lot of us think that we're just talking to a can that goes out to nowhere. And that validation just makes us want to engage with them and want to have kind of a, a guest relationship. I think it's also worth pointing out, like I, I have talked to pretty big name podcasters, people that we really look up to and uh, straight up, they're normal people. Like they're normal. Um, so you don't need to feel intimidated. I know that sometimes it's going to happen, but like it's podcasting. You can be a lot more down to earth and a lot more casual than you think that you can. And also if anyone is like dismissive or rude in a response, just remember that like, you don't want to have them on a, a guest anyway. They're rude. <laughs> you dodged a bullet here. It Always make sure after you send a pitch, you follow up. Most of our success doesn't come from the initial pitch. It comes from following up. Do not underestimate the follow-up. Obviously, be respectful of everybody's time and try not to overdo the follow-up. Give them enough time to see the email and maybe they just forgot it and then give them a nudge. But also use that follow-up effectively. Don't just say, 
hey, just wanted to make sure you saw this. Also, add a little bit more in there. It's like, hey, I, I loved your episode this week, or I saw you talked about this this week. I think it might play into what I talked about up here kind of thing. Because we have noticed that follow-ups can make a huge difference and can be the one that you actually get the answer to, don't underestimate the quality of that. I think one thing people go off with the follow-up is like, they don't want to bug the person too much. Okay, great tip. Say that. Literally say that. We've done this in emails because like we get it. We get it. We get lots of emails every day too. If you say like, I'm so sorry to be annoying. I just want to make sure that you saw this, you know, loved your episode, et cetera, et cetera. That's fine. People like that. And I've had multiple people tell me like, thank you so much for following up. I was sick or this got buried in my inbox. It, it happens. And I'm sure you can imagine if it's happening to us, it's also happening to the kind of people that you're wanna, gonna wanna book as a guest too. Inboxes get flooded. So you've landed a guest, great job, proud of you. Now is when you send the big email. I have a template email that I send to my guests that it gives the date and the time, which I also have like a Google calendar set up as well. Um, I'll give the link, I use Zencaster to record. So I'll use, I'll put that right in the email. I will give the segments for my podcast that they need to like be prepped that we're gonna have segments and that they should have something kind of ready. Um, and then I also really highly encourage having a guest info packet and also a release form. I'm so sorry to be so boring and talk about legal. I am not a lawyer. So take everything I'm saying with a grain of not a lawyer, salt. It's so important though. And that's something that I think what you're getting at, you have to have those things because you just don't know. You don't know what that guest's reaction is gonna be to the interview, to the promotion of it. They don't. They might not like the picture you chose they might not like what they said. I also think that this is really good to also protect your guest. When you make these release forms, they can be collaborative efforts. Like you can ask what would make you feel protected here too. Um, and then in the guest info packet, I just like collecting things like links to their website, links to their socials, handles, um, any important dates they have of things that they're working on, anything that will help me promote them and make sure that I've got all of their information. Obviously like name, pronouns, email, things like that as well. For guest organization and promo tools, I really like using things like Airtable. I at least have something like a spreadsheet where you're making sure that you're tracking all of your guests information you know what dates things need to go live you have all of their handles and everything like that again and for promo tools i always like making sure that they have customized graphics to share things like that i think the biggest thing is making it easy for that other person to be a guest not leaving them with any questions if you were to be a guest on another show what would you want to know? What would you want to be told ahead of time in order to prepare? Always think about like, what is the other person experiencing? How can I make this easier for them? Because that also might make it easier for you. And then things will just flow more smoothly.